From the far horizons of the unknown come transcribed tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future, adventures in which you'll live in a million could-be years on a thousand maybe worlds. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Street and Smith, publishers of Astounding Science Fiction, presents... X minus one... Tonight, a Ray Bradbury story, Marionettes Incorporated. By the year 1990, we should see many amazing technological advances. And yet in many ways, life will be very much the same. A husband will stop off at a bar on his way home and perhaps unburden himself a little to a friendly bartender. Well, that's good. Almost feel as if I could go home and face Nettie now. Wife trouble, Mr. Smith? Yeah, wife trouble, Sam. If only she'd relax a little bit. Look, you see this bruise on my lip? She kisses me. For an hour every night when I come home. Can you do anything for it? Well, I try, Sam. You can't figure them out. Well, I guess I'll go home and feed myself to the lioness. I tell you, Sam, when Nettie gets finished demonstrating how much she's missed me... I feel like a man who's been stuffed into an electronic washing machine with the dial set at rinse dry. How much do I owe you? Well, if it isn't Henry Smith. Huh? Brailing! Well, as I live and breathe, Walter Bray... What are you doing here? Having the night out. Say, does Gloria know about this? Things have changed, Henry. I thought she kept you chained to the bedpost most of the time. Not anymore, Henry, not anymore. Say, so you aren't divorced, are you? Don't know. Gloria's home. What did you do, put sleeping powder in a coffee? Oh, goodness, no. That, that would be highly unethical. Well, now, look, I can't believe you just walked out on her. Ten years of marriage, Henry, and I never had a night to myself. But it will be different from now on. By the way, what time is it? Uh, ten o'clock. Well, I guess I'd better be going. <laughs> Scared? Don't want to crowd my luck. Oh. Although, really, there's, there's nothing to worry about. Well, I'd sure like to know how you do it, Walling. Would you really? Yes, I would. All right, Henry, since you've always been a friend of mine, I'll let you in on it. Come on, my car's outside. I'll drive you home and let you see how it's done. Well, now, that's nice of you, Walter. No, oh, no, not at all. We fellas have to stick together. I don't suppose you know how Gloria and I came to be married in the first place. Uh, no, I don't. Well, one evening, she threatened to tear off her clothing and call the police unless I married her. No. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a bit extreme, isn't it? Gloria's a nervous girl. Oh. I bet you've had a pretty wretched time of it, huh? Yeah, yeah. Didn't take long for me to become the laughing stock of the neighborhood. Henpeck Brailing, they used to call me. I know that. But, uh... Things are changing now. See this? What's this? A single ticket to Rio on the morning rocket. I have hotel reservations there for a month. A whole month, Henry, to have a fling. Well, won't Gloria make trouble over that? <laughs> well, that's the amazing part of it, Henry. She won't even know that I'm gone. Huh? And I'll be back in a month and no one the wiser. <laughs> you, you don't believe it, do you? Well, frankly, No. Just how are you going to swing it, Walter? That's the secret, Henry. I, I tell you, it is the most wonderful thing ever invented. Worth every cent I paid for it. Well, uh, what is it? it? I'm going to show you. Now, here's my house. You notice the lights are all out? Uh-huh. Shh, shh, shh. Now, we'll wait here on the front porch. Say, Walter, you haven't gone off your rocker, have you? Shh, shh, shh. Let me see. Uh, oh, I meow twice. That's, that's it. <clears throat> meow. Meow. Now watch the window in my bedroom. It looks as if somebody's... Hey, there's a man up there. He's looking loud. Good, he, he sees me. Now he'll be down directly. Oh, well, now look, isn't this a bit embarrassing for you, Walter? No, no, not at all. 
You'll we'll find out. Here he comes. Hello, B2. Good evening, Mr. Brayling. Uh, either I'm going out of my mind or there are two of you. You never told me you had a twin brother? I don't. Look, if this fellow were in the pajamas, I couldn't tell you apart. Well, that's the secret, Henry. Uh, everything go all right, uh, B2? Uh, just fine, Mr. Brayling. Uh, I suppose my wife was in her usual good form this evening? Well, as a matter of fact, we spent the evening playing gin. No screaming, shouting, accusations? Uh, no, sir. It was a very quiet evening. Well, but this is even better than I thought. Uh, Marionettes Incorporated aims to satisfy, sir. Uh, Did he say Marionettes Incorporated? That's right, Henry. Then now look him over. Isn't he excellently fashioned? You you wouldn't dream he was a robot, a marionette. No, I don't believe it. <laughs> well, it's it's against the law, of course, to duplicate a human like this, but it's it's well worth the opportunity. I still don't believe it. You can't tell him from a human. Well, on, only one way. Put your ear next to his chest. Huh? That's it. Now listen. It's machinery. Water, old man, how long has this been going on? Well, I've had him a month. I, I keep him in the cellar in my toolbox. And tonight I told Gloria that I'd like to be excused for five minutes to run down to the cigar store. Huh? She agreed. I went down the cellar, took out Brailing too, and sent him back upstairs to sit with my wife till I got home. That's miraculous. Of course, Walter, it, uh, well, it doesn't seem quite ethical somehow. Oh, nonsense. Highly ethical. Hmm? I've been home all evening. I shall be home with her for the next month. In, in the meantime, another gentleman named Walter Brayling will be in Rio having the time of his life. Well, can he uh, walk around without fuel for a month? He refuels himself. Oh. Uh, he's built to do everything. Eat, drink, sleep. You'll take good care of my wife, won't you, B2? Well, your wife is rather nice. I've grown quite fond of her. <laughs> you see? Yeah, Walter, uh, oh, man, uh... How long has this Marionettes Incorporated outfit been in business? Secretly for two years now. Why? Well, I wonder, uh, you suppose uh, there's a possibility that uh, I might get in touch with him? You? Hmm. But your nephew is madly in love with you. Well, I know that, but even so, uh, <laughs> just a little respite, you know, a uh, night or two once a month, huh? But she loves you dearly. Yeah. So much she can't bear me to leave her for half an hour. You know that lately she's taken to calling me up at work 10 or 12 times a day, talking baby talk? Your Nettie? My Nettie. So now what do you say, old man, hmm? As a favor to an old buddy, huh? A fellow lodge member? Well, I, I could put you in touch with the man who makes them. Because uh-huh. you'd be pledged to secrecy once you learned where he's located. Oh, well, naturally, naturally. Oh, very, very well, then uh, here's his card. Hmm, Marionettes Incorporated. W. Zeig, proprietor and owner. New humanoid plastic 1990 models guaranteed against wear. Our motto, no strings attached. Address the jumble shop, 43 South Wesley Drive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mr. Zyke will take care of you. He's a charming fellow. Uh-huh. Real craftsman. Say, that's wonderful, Walt. I'll see him first thing tomorrow. Well, I better be getting home now. Uh, Nettie is probably splitting a gasket. Well, see you around, old man, after I get back from Rio. <laughs> oh, uh, while I'm gone, you might drop around regularly, just as you always have. Uh, treat Brailing too here as if he were me. Otherwise, Gloria might be suspicious. Yes, fine, I'll do that. Oh, uh, before I go, uh, these marionettes, uh, they're safe, aren't they? Oh, absolutely. Uh, tell him, B2. Oh, we're guaranteed. Uh-huh. Well, that's fine. Well, good night, Walter. Uh, good night, uh, <coughs> B2. Good night, Mr. Smith. Good night, Henry. Ah. <sighs> Well, I'm glad someone else will have a chance at a little happiness and freedom. All right, Brailing too. It's back into the cellar box for you. Come on, down the steps. That's it. It's uh, very damp down here, Mr. Brailing. Bad plumbing. Here we are. Brailing. Yeah? Uh, before you put me back into the toolbox, could we have a word... Certainly, old man. Now, this toolbox... Yes, what about it? Well, I don't like it, Mr. Brayling. Why not? Well, it's cramped. Oh. 
Well, I'll try to fix up something more comfortable when I get back from Rio. All right, now, before Gloria gets worried, back into the... Marionettes are made to move, not keep still. Uh, now, how, how would you like to lie in a stuffy old box most of the time? Well, I didn't realize you fellas were that sensitive. Well, you wouldn't like it at all. I, I keep running. There's no way to shut me off. Now, I have my feelings, you know. Well, a day after tomorrow, I'll be off to Rio, and you won't have to stay in the box for a whole month. You can move upstairs. But when you come back from Rio, I'll go back into the box. <sighs> Mr. Tsai didn't tell me at Marionettes Incorporated that it was possible to get a difficult specimen. Oh, well, uh, there's a lot he doesn't know about us. Look, look, look here, B2. This has gone far enough. I'll never get to now, Rio. Come on, come on now, into the box. And another thing. Well... Your wife. Yes, what about my I've wife? grown quite fond I'm of her. I'm glad that you enjoy your employment. You'll have the whole month. I'm afraid you don't quite understand, Braley. I've fallen in love with yes, her. Yes, well, all... You what? Well, you see, well, you just don't appreciate it. Maybe if you hadn't acted so meek and apologetic about everything, well, she'd have a little more respect for you as a man. You aren't supposed to behave like this, you know. Well, I think I could be very happy if I were married to Gloria. Aren't you forgetting that you are nothing but a big, overgrown puppet? Now, careful, Brailing. I I'm sensitive. Uh, I'm sorry. Look, uh, you, you wouldn't mind waiting here a moment, would you? I have to go upstairs and make a phone call. Uh, to whom? Nobody important. I, I, um, uh, I have to call Henry Smith about something. You're lying. Now, you're going to call Marionettes Incorporated and tell Mr. Tsaig to come and, and get me. No, really, I'm, I'm not. I, I was... I was. B2, stay away. Now, stand where you are, Brayley. Now, B2, take your hand off my no, arm. No, Brayley. What are you going to do? Nothing much. I'm just going to put you in the toolbox, lock it, and lose the key. Then I'll buy another ticket to Rio, and Gloria and I can have a wonderful vacation. You're insane. Oh, am I? Now, wait a minute. Hold on, B2. Don't, don't, don't be rash. Now, let's talk this over. Uh, goodbye, Brayley. Now, B2, stop it. Don't, don't. Let's, let, let go. Uh, into the box, Brayley. Uh, uh, there. Let me out. Let me out. Walter? Walter? Yes, Gloria? Well, what in the world are you doing down there at this time of night? Well, nothing, lover. Uh, the pipes were knocking, and I'm just making sure the boiler hasn't exploded. Now, you go to bed, and I'll be up soon. Hurry, won't you? We had such a nice evening. I'm lonesome for you. Well, you won't ever be lonesome again, darling. Never again. Good morning, Nettie. Good morning, darling. How are you? Have a nice time last night? I... I missed you so... Mm -hmm. Is breakfast ready? Well, aren't you going to kiss me good morning? Huh? Oh, uh... Yes, I suppose so. Mm. You're so wonderful, Henry. I, I guess I'm the luckiest person in the world. Mm -hmm. Now, here's your coffee. How would you like your eggs? Oh, uh, any way at all. Oh, but I want to please you. Look, skip the eggs this morning. But you have to eat to keep well, darling. Well, I'm very healthy. I, I have an early business appointment this morning. Oh? Yes, it's a... A friend of Walter Brayling's. Uh, I met Walter last night. Oh. Yes. So, uh, I'd better be off. Well, now, Nettie, don't look as if I were on my way to Rio or something. Well, it, it's just that I miss you so. I want to be with you all the time. Oh, dear, do I have to go through this every morning? I'll be back at supper. Now, there's no need to cry now, is there? <laughs> no, darling. You aren't displeased with me, are you? I try so hard to do everything just as I think you'll like it. I know, no. I, I'm, I'm not displeased. Now, goodbye, dear. Henry. Yes? You forgot to kiss me goodbye. No strings attached, no strings attached. A very nice puppet with no strings attached. Do -do -do. Uh, let's see now. Jumble shop. 43 South Wesley. Well, that should be about... Um... Ah, here it is. Yes? Uh, Mr. Zeig? Yes? Uh, Walter Brayling recommended me. 
Enter. Thank you. Your name? Henry Smith, 55 Evergreen Place. And what can we do for you, Mr. Smith? Well, uh, Mr. Brayling showed me his marionette last night. I, uh, <clears throat> well, I was intrigued with the idea. Uh, not that my wife has anything like that female meat grinder he's married to, you understand, but, uh, well, I'm a man who enjoys an occasional evening with the boys, you know, without uh, complications. <laughs> Naturally. Yes, yeah, so I thought... Um, that I could duplicate you? Exactly. Oh, I, I think it might be arranged. Uh-huh. Oh, yes, how much? $9,000. Th- uh, oh, I, I have an inferior model at 75. No, 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 no. If I go through with this, nothing is too good for Nettie. Uh, Nettie's my wife. Uh, we've been uh, putting money aside to buy a summer home in Westport, but... Yeah, uh, sometimes we must choose. Uh, yeah, yes, well, uh, perhaps I could just slip out 9000 uh, It's a joint account. Uh, um, how soon could I have it? Oh, I could construct a mannequin in about two months' time. Good. Shall I consider the order plate? At once. Of course, uh, you will have to report here for a body mold, mm-hmm. color index of your hair, lips, mm-hmm. skin, etc. And I'll have to do a complete electro-emotional calibration. Uh-huh. Now, you guarantee that these models are foolproof? <laughs> as foolproof as I can make them, Mr. Smith. And I've had years of training. And there's no chance of detection? None whatever. I've never had a complaint. Uh, very well, Mr. Zeig. I'll get the money from the bank and send it to you. I am sure you won't be sorry, Mr. Smith. You will be just as satisfied as Walter Brayling. Oh, uh, tell her. Yes, Mr. Smith. I'd like to cash this draft on my joint account, please. Yes, sir. Nine thousand dollars, sir? That's right. Oh, I'm afraid that's impossible, Mr. Smith. Impossible? (laughs) My wife and I have a good fifteen thousand dollars in our account. Uh, You're mistaken, Mr. Smith. Well, I know... Uh, Here's your card, sir. You see, Mr. Smith withdrew ten thousand dollars recently. Ten thousand dollars? Without even telling me? I remember it distinctly, Mr. Smith. She said it was for a surprise for you. Oh, good Lord, she's bought that house in Connecticut. My birthday is next week. Oh, no, no, no. I've got to borrow it somewhere. I've already contracted... Uh, yes, sir. Uh, quite a surprise for you, mm-hmm, Mr. Smith. Yes? Oh, hello, Henry. Uh, hello, Gloria. Is Walter home? Uh, I'd like to speak to him. He should be back soon. Will you wait? Uh, yes, yes, I'd better. Oh, say, Henry, as long as you're here, maybe you can help me with something. What? I went downstairs to get an old suitcase a little while ago, and I heard the strangest noises near that old tool chest of Walter's. He mentioned that the boiler was acting up, and, well, I'm afraid to go down there again. I wonder if you'd take a look. What kind of noises? Like um, a, a thumping sound. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe I'd better go down, Gloria. You stay up here. Should I call a plumber, do you think? No, 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 no. I'll take care of it. Well, it's right down those stairs. All right, I'll have a look. Hello? Hello in there. Uh, Let me out. Let me out. Shh. Uh, Just a minute. Keep quiet, for goodness sake. Let me out. I'll have to smash the lock. Now, what? Henry, thank thank God you've come. Well, what's the meat? I've, I've been in there all night. I, I thought I'd suffocate. He tried to kill me. He tried to murder me. Who? Which one are you? No, don't be an idiot. I'm Walter. Well, what happened? Me too, the marionette. He stuffed me in a toolbox and left me to suffocate. What? Fortunately, I found an old file in there and managed to get an air hole through the wood. Good Lord. He's taking Gloria with him to Rio. Have, have they left yet? No, he's gone downtown for the tickets. Good. We may have time. For what? To get down to Marionettes Incorporated and tell Mr. Zeig to stop him. You're in no condition. Don't, don't worry about me. We can't waste any time. Now, come on. Yes, but what about Gloria? I'll sneak out. Tell her that you fixed the plumbing. Tell her anything. I'll meet you outside. All right. What a fool I've been. Oh, what a fool I almost was. I went down and ordered one of those things today. <laughs>
Uh, Gloria, uh, Gloria, love. Yes, darling. Did you get the tickets to Rio? Uh, right here in my wallet. A honeymoon for two under the pampas moon. Oh, Walter, it's so nice to have you like this. Oh, you like the change? I don't know what did it, but whatever it is, I'm in favor of it. I hope it's permanent. Well, I intend to see that it is. Uh, by the way, darling, do you happen to remember where that old pistol of mine is? Pistol? Yeah, I just thought, uh, since we're going to be traveling in strange countries, uh, well, it wouldn't hurt to bring it along. Well, I, I think it's here in the sideboard. There. You know how frightened I am of these things. Well, I'll, I'll be very careful of it. Now, in fact, I think I'll go down to the basement and practice. Uh, not really shooting it, of course, to, just to make sure it's in good working order. Well, now, do be careful, darling. Oh, I will. If you should hear a shot, now, don't be frightened. I may fire it into a block of wood just to test it. Perhaps I'll fire it into that old tool chest of mine. Uh, that should absorb it. Oh, speaking of that tool chest... Yeah, what about uh, it? It reminds me that Henry Smith was here. Oh? Yes, I, I heard some noises downstairs, and he went to fix the plumbing. Oh, is he still down there? No, no, he left. I really don't understand it. He seemed so anxious to see you before he went down to the cellar. And then he just left. Did he stop the noises? Well, he must have. I don't hear them. Mm, yeah, I see. What is it, dear? Well, I have to go out for a while, darling. But, Walter, we have to pack if we're leaving. Well, I'll be back soon. There's something very important I have to attend to. What is it? Well, just some personal business with Henry Smith. Now, please excuse me, darling. And now, don't worry. When I get back, everything will be fixed once and for all. Oh, we can enjoy the rest of our lives just as though the old Walter Brayling never existed. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Brayling and Mr. Smith. Come in, gentlemen, come in. What brings you? Mr. Zeig, you told me your marionettes were foolproof. They are. My personal guarantee goes with you. We know all one. about your personal guarantee. Except that Mr. Brayling's dummy knocked him out, yes. stuffed him in a toolbox to suffocate, and is making plans to run away with his wife. Mm. Oh, dear. Yes, well, Mr. Zeig. Well, I... I really don't know what to say, gentlemen. What Mr. Brayling and myself would like to know, Mr. Zeig, is exactly what are you planning to do to stop this overambitious robot? Well, of course, we shall have to recover a B2 first, and then I'll simply dismantle him. Yes, and well, he doesn't seem to want to be dismantled, Mr. Zeig. In fact, I think that you'll have trouble catching him. Maybe I can save you the trouble, huh? gentlemen. Yeah. B2. Look out, he's got a gun. I, I thought I'd find you here when I discovered the tool chest empty. Now, you look, B2. Whatever you're planning, you won't get away with it. Oh, I think I will. Mr. Tsai, can't you do something? I'm afraid I can't think of anything. I'll save you the trouble because I'm going to kill the three of you. No, no you, you won't get away with it. No, no, you forget that Gloria and I will be on a plane to Rio in a few hours. All, all right, Mr. Tsai, you first. Now, see here, this isn't fair. I created you. I, uh, you can't, you... <laughs> You grab him. I've, I've got him. Now, quick, that hammer. Look out! Oh, well, that's the end of Brailing, too. But he, he got Zyg, though. Yeah. Right through the... the mm -hmm. Holy jumping catfish, and he... It's look at a, him. Hmm? Look, look at Zyg. It's nothing but a mass of coils and springs, just like Brailing, too. Well, he's nothing but a marionette. He's no different... Brailing. Do you know what this means? Oh, th this is incredible. A, a, a marionette building other marionettes? But someone must have built Mr. Zeig originally. Yeah. I, I wonder... If well, perhaps Mr. Zeig turned on whoever built him the same way Brailing too turned on you. Well, it, at any rate, we'll never know. Oh. See, I wonder how many of these things are walking around among us. Oh, I shudder to think of that. You know, some of our best friends might be. Ooh, yeah. Come on, we have to get out of here. Yeah, but the, the police... Now, don't be a fool, Brailing. There's, there's been no crime committed here. All the police will find is two oversized puppets with the springs coming out of them. And they seem so... so lifelike. Yes, I know, and they were only machinery. You've got to remember that. Yes. But, but, but what'll I tell Gloria? Well, if I were you, Brailing, I wouldn't tell Gloria a thing. I'd simply pick up that other ticket to Rio and take her on a honeymoon, just as she's expecting. Uh, but, but what about uh, you, though, Henry? What are you going to do? Me? Well, I'm going home and give Nettie a kiss that'll singe your hair. 
Oh, you know, when I think of what might have happened if I'd gone through with this marionette thing, it, it makes a fellow realize how lucky he is to be married to a decent woman. Oh, come on, let's go. <laughs> Nettie? Nettie? Where are you, sweetheart? In here, darling. Oh, oh, I've missed you today. Come here. Oh, Henry. Hmm. Oh. oh, you look tired, darling. Can I do something for you? Just tell me I'm yours to command. Oh, man's a fool to jeopardize a nice home and a loving wife like you. Oh, you do love me, don't you, Nettie? Oh, you know I do. Hmm. Here, let me get your slippers on. No, no. Feels good to sit back on the sofa and relax. Oh, you don't know what a trying day I've had. Oh, I can see you're all upset. It it isn't anything I've done, is it, dearest? No, no, no. Well, uh, in a way, something you've done is connected with it, yes. What's that, darling? Uh, The money. Money? I know you wanted to surprise me with the house, darling, but really you shouldn't have taken that money out of the bank without consulting me. Henry, I don't even know what you're talking about. Now, now, Nettie. But I don't. Nettie. Oh, you're so upset, darling. If it's anything important, let's talk about it later. Meanwhile, why don't you just put your head on my shoulder and rest? <laughs> well, I must admit that sounds enticing. Here. Let me make you comfortable. <sighs> there. <sighs> now you just close your eyes. <sighs> That's it. <sighs> Daddy. Yes, darling? You hear something? No, darling. You sure? Like what? Like the ticking of a clock? No. Strange. I don't hear it now, but when I had my ear against your chest... Oh, no. Oh, no, she couldn't have done that to me. Not Nettie. What are you talking about? I'm talking about... No, I won't believe it. You're my Nettie, aren't you? You're real live flesh and blood. But I hear it. It's coming from you. It's coming from you. You have just heard X-1 presented by the National Broadcasting Company in cooperation with Street and Smith, publishers of astounding science fiction. Tonight, by transcription, X-1 has brought you Marionettes Incorporated. Written by Ray Bradbury and adapted for radio by George Lefferts. Featured in the cast were Les Damon, Dick Hamilton, Carl Swenson, Theo Goetz, Arthur Cole, Bob Hastings, Freddie Chandler, and Ginger Jones. Your announcer, Fred Collins. X-1 was directed by Daniel Sutter and is an NBC Radio Network production. (laughs) 